What's up guys, today I'm going to be talking to you about how to beat other players in PvP and how to become a better player at PvP. Alright, so I am a pretty decent player, I would say I am in the World Series caliber of players, which is the top tier of players, and I just want to give you a couple of tips that I wish that I would have learned when I was first starting out or whenever I was during at a slump or if I was just really struggling to beat other people. Um, I ca I'm going to talk about how hitting really changes the game, how to how to hit and pitch effectively, and basically the mentality of what, what to look at and where to go. So, the first thing I'd like to talk about is probably a hitting perspective, and the big thing that really changed for me when I was at the lower ranks, especially championship series to world series, is... I decided to change my hitting view and I know I don't know if all of you guys do but you guys should all be probably using strike zone one I was using strike zone three and I just could not see the plate I didn't know what was a ball or a strike and I was really struggling I couldn't get my PCI right and really one way like I have a lot of people ask me a lot of people who are asking all over the internet is how do I fix from dropping my PCI now, one thing that I learned from Kyle Next Door, who is a big Twitch streamer, who I watch pretty much all the time, he's probably my MLB The Show role model, but anyways, he keeps his PCI in one spot every single time, whether it's a righty or a lefty, and it's just repetition, and you just learn from it, and that's how... I have gotten a lot better with it because whenever you see certain pitches, if you've kind of gone to that pitch before from the same spot, like I see a lot of people whenever they're playing, they try different things with their PCI, they change it up a lot, and really one thing I'd like to challenge you is start putting it in one spot and start trying to face other people with repetition and once you get it down and once you get down the hitting view, once you get down the, the every single part of hitting, you will understand that this is you're becoming a better hitter off of this and that you are squaring more balls up. So one of the things that I really focus on hitting is really just I do a lot of situational hitting and I bunt a lot. That's not something that a lot of MLB players do. But one of the reasons I'm just my team is because uh, my team is more of a speedy team. I've got Ricky, I've got Andrew, and I've got Kins. And so if you're on my team and you're in the middle infield or outfield, you can run a little bit. So I try hitting and running, and I basically just bunt a lot. And one thing that I don't see a lot of people do that has really been a big help to my offense has been the squeeze. So a lot of if your team is a lot like mine and has a lot of bunting and a lot of bunt potential and a lot of speed, if you've got a guy at third and there's less than two outs and you're facing a good pitcher, it's a close game, it's 1-0, 1-1, I would basically just recommend to you just at least have the squeeze in the back of your head, maybe try it once if you're not feeling too confident, if this pitcher's been throwing some good pitches to you then maybe you can try to get a run on the board by that way. I can't tell you guys how many games I have won where it's just been four to five hit games. But I've won them because I've out base ran and I've outplayed the other opponent, whether it was a squeeze, whether it was a steal, whether it was something. And that's just something that will elevate your game a lot and that will help you beat a lot of players that you might not normally beat. Another thing I'd like to talk about is how the mentality of things is I used to do this a lot whenever I was at the lower ranks of ranked seasons and I would be like well if this guy's got a better team than me then I don't know if I can beat him I can't tell you how many times especially at the lower levels if they have a really good team and they've got Willie Mays they've got Pudge just don't discourage yourself a lot of those players will chase outside the zone a lot of those players are not very good players they just have a couple of really good cards and as far as pitching goes, I know I gave up that bomb right there, but this is how I've been attacking it, and this is how I've been getting better with it, is have been really just your first couple innings, you feel out to see what the, your opponent's good at, whether it's taking an outside pitch or if he struggles a lot with changing speeds. So if you throw him a fastball and then a changeup, and he's always really, really late on the changeup, and then you're able to just change speeds and get misplacements then and bad contact. We contact like Frank there. That's pretty bad contact from a slider in. 
So another thing that you should do is if you see someone is bad at something, repeat it till they're good at it. Like if you know they're chasing out of the zone, like I saw this guy swinging at everything, throw a curveball in the dirt there. If you see that they are swinging the zone, make them prove that they cannot do it before you change to it. One way I would lose games is people would be swinging at everything, but I would still be trying to get ahead. I would still be trying to throw strikes over the plate that caught too much of the plate. And then they would just hit that yard, they would take the yard, I would get mad. And I just wasn't using their weaknesses against them. So if you find out something that they do that's really bad or something that they need to change, and you, you just take advantage of it, is what I'm saying. So just take advantage of it, don't get discouraged, and keep on playing your game. You will climb in the ranks if you keep on playing and you learn from your losses. One thing that I really learned from is... You know, having a speedy team, I was really aggressive on the base paths, which lost me a lot of games, cost me a lot of runs. I would try to stretch singles into doubles that shouldn't be doubles. I would try to steal all the time. And one thing that I really learned from just playing the game and learning from a couple of my games is that I don't have to be as aggressive on the base paths. And you just need to learn what you can do with and without your team. And if you want to have a play style, if you want to be a speedy guy, speedy team, you might need to change your lineup and change a couple of things and just basically change your order of how you're going to go at games. Because everybody has a different play style, even in MLB The Show and in real baseball, you know what you're good at and you know what you're not. So don't try to... Don't try to make yourself someone that you're not. If a YouTuber says, oh, well, you should be hitting doubles in the gaps, you should be hitting triples, you should never bunt, you should never do that. Well, if you're a speedy guy and that's how you win, then you need to take advantage of that and you need to play your game. To end it here, basically, I just wanted to say that next video I'm going to be coming out with a budget cards and a budget beast like top 10 top 15 that really can just help you guys out at that lower ranks and um, as all thank you for watching and I really hope that this helped you to become a better player and please just let me know in that comment section if you learned anything from this video and as always I'll see you later Scott Ober, a six foot two inch right hander jogs in to take over on the mound. Ober. Now